Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam and I want to show you how I go about propagating figs. Figs are not the easiest thing in the world to root, but what roots best is this year's growth that has hardened off some right here. It will be the part that either has or had the figs on them at the time you're doing your propagation, but I will typically cut that new growth right there. And that's the piece I'm actually gonna to use to create a rooted cutting. I would actually prefer this wood to be quite a bit longer for whatever reason this year, we only got about four or five inches of growth on these before they started to set fruit, at which point they don't really grow anymore. But I'm gonna take the leaves off of the side of this thing and the figs. I'm gonna leave the top two leaves on it just like that. And I'm gonna collect quite a few of these that look like this, that are about three, four inches long on this year's growth that has the fig on them. And it's just slightly woody and it's still smooth. The old growth on figs become, you'll, you'll see the difference. The, the stem color changes, but it's that dark coloration right there. And I'll leave a couple of these small leaves right on the top of it. So I do figs very differently than I root other material. I actually root figs in a container like this. I put about three or four inches of soil into the bottom of it. It's the same 50% peat moss, 50% perlite mix that I use on all of my propagation. Just mixed it very thoroughly and wetted it. The peat moss takes quite a bit of water to wet initially. I keep about three to four inches of this container without soil so that when I stick my figs into it, they barely stick up above the top of the container and I'll show you why in a minute. The main reason that I don't do figs in the 50 or 60 cell trays is because the leaves are so big and I have to do a big time leaf reduction to put them in little 50 cell trays. When I do that leaf reduction, it opens up this leaf to all kinds of disease problems and I've had several years where I've gotten basically 0% on my figs because something entered through this cut and you can see the leaf just start to dissolve and then the cutting ended up rotting and I got nothing out of them. So I've learned to use this technique and keep the leaves intact. So I had prepped these when I took them off the tree, just like I told you, this is that newest growth, still that smooth bark from this year. I've left one leaf, I've taken the figs off. I've left this terminal growth. That's kind of important. That's where most of our growth is going to originate from. And we'll get a little branching off the side, but the main place where we're gonna get new leaves is gonna be right there on the top. When I have them ready to stick, I do put a fresh cut on the bottom and I'll make that about a 45 degree angle. So we have a nice fresh cut. I'm using dip and grow and the dip and grow is mixed for hardwood cuttings. These are very substantial. It's gonna take a little more of this to burn that end a little bit. So I've got it mixed five parts water and one part dip and grow. I'll dip that cutting in that dip and grow and I'll stick it down in the soil, maybe a half inch to an inch, no more than that. I don't want to stick it four inches down in the soil. I just want to get it down in there and pinched well enough to hold it upright, just like that. Here's another example. Again, big giant leaf. I'm going to cut this bottom at a 45 degree angle, dip it in the dip and grow and stick it in here. And I'm going to try to orient these leaves beside one another. I'm not going to put these in mist. I'm actually just going to create a little house around these to hold moisture in place. I don't want to put a lot of mist on this. I'll end up rotting them for sure. Another thing I've learned over time, all I'm going to end up doing after I fill this container is put this bag over the top of them, pinch it down all the way around. I have a couple holes in the top of it. I'm going to slide this thing under my deck someplace out of the sunlight. I'm going to wait two or three weeks and then I'm going to check on them again. I've watered the soil well enough where it's going to stay wet. I'm not even going to need to check on these as long as they're not in direct sunlight. I'm going to take them back out in a couple weeks and individually I'm going to pull them out and there should be a callus around the bottom of where we made that cut. A callus will just look like where you wounded your skin and you got a callus right on the top of it. It's exactly the same. 
it'll be a bulged out area around that cut. The ones that have that scarring on the bottom of them are the ones that are most likely to root. And at that point, I'll go through and thin out the ones that I think are going to fail, and it's going to be some percentage of them. I never get 100% on figs, but that's how I do it. That's my initial time going through them, culling out what I don't think is gonna end up rooting to give the rest of them some room, and I'll actually end up leaving them in this container over the winter, and then in the spring, I'll divide them out and plant them in individual containers. They will have roots on them at that point. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill the rest of this container with the cuttings I have. I'm probably gonna end up with maybe 15, 16 cuttings in this one container. I know this looks like just a hodgepodge of nonsense, but there's 16 cuttings in there. They're all stuck down about a half inch. They were all dipped in the dip and grow. I've got a tag, because these are brown turkey. They were stuck in mid-July. I'm gonna put that tag in there, and then I'm gonna put this plastic bag around it and put it under my deck. In terms of winterizing these, like I say, in about three weeks, which for me will be around the middle of August, at that point I'm gonna call out what I don't think is gonna root and put that bag back over the top of it, keep it under my deck through the fall. In the winter time, I will likely, if I was doing this as a backyard gardener, I'd likely drag the thing into my garage that should keep it warm enough. Uh, you just don't want this pot to freeze solid. In my area, there's almost maybe only five, six, seven nights a winter that would really cause significant damage to these. And I'll definitely put them inside when that happens or I'll drag them in a little hoop house or something like that just to keep that pot from freezing solid. But I don't want them heated over winter. I definitely want them to go dormant. I want them to lose these leaves. When these leaves fall off and they will fall off, they may even fall off while we're trying to root them, they need to come out. So when I take this plastic off and I cull them out, we'll likely have lost a few leaves, even on the ones that are gonna root. Uh, those leaves need to come out because they'll sit on the soil and cause some issues at that time. When I do pull the plastic off and cull them, I'll check the water at that point and I'll get the soil re-wet. It's just not gonna require a lot of water. This is not something you're gonna need to check on. This is really something you need to do. Put this plastic bag on it, slide it under the deck, and leave it alone for two or three weeks. I don't think you're gonna need any additional water in it. That bag will hold that humidity in place. When the bag comes off, maybe you water it then, maybe again three to four weeks after that. So this is it. I've got it under my deck. I have it sitting on a couple bricks. I may pull that plastic off in a week and just confirm what I think, which is it's gonna stay plenty wet between now and the time that I check them to see if they're calloused and cull them out. But I think it will be absolutely fine. As an example, here's another similar technique I'm using for some other things. And these gardenias have rooted in nicely. My blueberries are starting to push roots out. Maybe you can see that. But I have some loose leaves on the soil here. And I definitely want to go through and get those out. They will affect the soil moisture. I've actually overwatered these a little bit, but they are calloused and looks like they are going to root. So full disclosure, I have never discovered a technique for rooting figs that I could root a high enough percentage that I could do this in the nursery business. I actually buy my figs as tissue culture from a nursery in Florida. It's just the best way to go. Uh, the technique I just showed you is absolutely perfect though if you have one or two fig trees in your yard and you wanna make a few more because of those 16 I stuck in that pot, I'm probably gonna end up culling out four or five that just never even gonna try to root. I'm probably gonna get six to eight that will definitely root, and I'm probably gonna kill a couple more transplanting them. So I can probably get expect to get somewhere in the 30 to 40% range out of those. Now, if I did a bunch of those pots, I could end up making quite a few of them. But like I say, great for doing it in your backyard, creating a few more figs for yourself. Probably not a great technique in the nursery business and probably needs to be thought of in a different way. Anytime I'm getting less than 70%, I don't think it's very economical. So I buy them tissue culture. So thanks for watching. And if this video was helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for future videos. Also comment below with any questions you have about propagation and I'll try to answer them. Thanks again.